first I want to start, is it deliberate that you reveal the title at the end? Yes, it is very deliberate. I just, it made sense. It was me. almost yeah. as if it was answering the questions that we were left with. I just want to talk br firstly about your approach to film in general. Everybody is known for a specific theme in their movies, and I think you have become known for representation, minority language, and very controversial storyline. <laughs> Let's talk about As I Am. Okay, so how As I Am came about is that uh, I was part of a script writing competition, and I happened to be one of the winners. And I insisted from the word go that I wanted the film to be in Swati. And they said that we wouldn't be able to find actors. And the thing is, if you don't train the actors mm -hmm. and you don't give them an opportunity, where are they going to get the training? You know, so uh, that's where uh, As I Am originated from. The story itself I had written and was published in Drum Magazine. Mm -hmm. And then I just converted it into a film. And it just spoke to the medium. Thank you. <laughs> And I might have been the only one who picks this. There's not a lot of dialogue in the film itself. Mm. But in the conversations that do go on, we get the idea that Ndumiso is, his, his sexuality is not clear. Can you talk about that character? Yes, yeah, so uh, Mlungi is his character, and I'll Mlungis. ask him <laughs> to join us if that's okay <laughs> a bit later. Um, Yes, he's sexually ambiguous, right? So mm. he doesn't conform. He chooses not to be labeled. Mm. He chooses to be who he wants to be. And he constantly, you know, a funeral mm. or a funeral space is one of the most gendered spaces. Mm -hmm. Women go to the kitchen, men go outside. Mm. And if you tend to transgress in those spaces, people become very uncomfortable. Which is what you have done with the film itself. How was it received within the community? Okay, so with this film, we're very lucky because it went to LA, mm -hmm. Pan African Film Festival went to, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to Switzerland, we, you know, we went to different film festivals, DIRF, you know, mm -hmm. so very fortunate and it opened doors and opened th that, you know, that conversation more to say, guys, we need to do something. It was just an experiment really to mm -hmm. say, look what our people can do so that you can finally put us on screen. And that was so many years ago, 2013, and there's still no Swati drama. Yeah. yeah. I th and and uh, uh, I think if we're just going to take it back to Wakanda forever, there is the, the, the idea of that excuse, as in people will not go and see such a film, was completely removed. But it hasn't been easy. We hear a lot of filmmakers in the country still talk about funding. Mm. And I will park this because our next film has a story around funding on its own. But at this point, I want to open up um, our remaining five minutes for any questions from your side. Can I also ask Didi to join us? Yes, please. The main actor. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And when they said, no, make it a Zulu movie, let's go to Eastern <laughs> Cape, let's get, you know, awesome. the best actors or whatever, Laban Shanshani, I said, no. There's Mtana Seka Didi, he acts. <laughs> <laughs> We've got talent. There's Mpumi, there's Masha. Yes. We're all there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Actually, you see, the only person we had is uh, Osti Makato, yes. the one from Scheme Sam, who happens to have a Swati background, and she really tried her Embraced best. It, yeah. But we would have preferred, could see, we have someone from the Low Felt. That would have been number one prize. But here we are at the Low Felt Book Festival, yes. which is screening a film made by people from the Low Felt. Yes. What is the future of filming and language? Look, I, I think that um, in terms of our stories, yeah, it draws me back to somebody like Chino and Chebe, for example. Mm -hmm. All right? mm -hmm. We always had our stories told by Europeans. Mm -hmm. uh, we always had our stories told by somebody else besides ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there's a future there. But the, the, one, the, the most important thing about all of this is the fact that She's from the community. Mm -hmm. These are our stories. Mm -hmm. 
And so he just takes a brave soul, like Sikhi, mm -hmm. to say, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna put a microscope on what we're doing and who we are as human beings. And it's, it's not profound. Mm -hmm. This is who we are. We can all recognize ourselves in this. Whilst it may be a short story, mm -hmm. it, we can see, and, and the moment it makes you uncomfortable, you talk about, oh, uh, ambiguous. Mm -hmm. All of life is ambiguous. The question is, how do you see yourself within the character? And that is where she's done her. That's where her power lies. It's just to put it out there, and then you see yourself in it, and that's the strength of it. Is the market ready? Speaking, mm. um, the the first year of the Lofeld Book Festival, the first film that was shown was um, Cynthia Jelle's adaptation. Right. Of happiness is a four letter word. Right. It did go commercial. Yes. We we not get again into the that storyline. As we sit here, the room is not full. The mm. story has come home. Mm. So if the funders say we can't pour money into it because it won't the there will be no bums on the seats, how do film makers like yourself who are not only struggling to get funding and are dead set on the idea of telling the stories that are not told? then come back from that? For me, uh, it's a different context because that would apply to a feature film. See, mm -hmm. what's nice about short films is that it's a space to play, push mm -hmm. and subvert conventions. So it's not about the commercial returns. Mm -hmm. So uh, that wouldn't be a problem. This merely becomes a proof of concept to say, let's then get more bums on seats because this one did this well. Mm -hmm. I know you did. I, I'm sorry to, to touch you mm -hmm. like, Look at Charlie Swan Monsters Ball. Mm -hmm. That was an indie film. She did tell a story about a woman that wasn't popular mm. that was on Not the typical Hollywood was, look. Yes, she yeah. was killing people. So it takes gravity. Mm -hmm. It takes people that tell the, un, the unpopular thing. The thing that doesn't make you, oh, the one of the group that really changes the world. See, so what do you want to say? What do you want us to take away from the films, the kind of films that you make? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> in everything you take away, something different. Like mm -hmm. in this one, I wanted us to see the family dynamics, mm -hmm. uh, how people behave on that week of, of the death, of the funeral, uh, how we treat each other, how we don't allow each other to be. And grieve. Yes, and actually that space, that family space is a very autocratic space where there's uh, actually a lot of oppression. Patriotic. Well, patriarchy, patriarchy as well also came also through. Monolithic. Yes. What mm. Patriarchy what must fall. What, what, <laughs> <laughs> what in God's good earth makes a Zulu, Swana, Kosa, mm. and Debele, and a Shanga person monolithic? Mm. We don't think the same. Mm. We are allowed to be black people and think differently. There's no need for us to all be in one space just because like we're black. Like And Lungis is like, like that. Like culture. What is that? I don't know what that is. I've been black all my life. I don't know what that is. So that's what I'm talking about. There's no monolithic term as to how we react to things. And of masculinity. And mm. of masculinity, because we spoke of different shades of masculinity. Yes. It's masculinity is not black or yeah. white. There's, there's a spectrum. There's black. a liminal space yes. where the different people exist. Yeah. And then there's the macho man. <laughs> and then on the other right. end of the binary, right? Yeah, right. Are you guys yeah. scripting the next film already? Yes. Like right. My yes. time's yes. up on this one. It's right. a, it's a gesture. Yes. So, so we are all existing on this idea on, on sort of like, what, is, what does it mean to be black? Mm. Really, that's that's our biggest question right now, because no longer are we are we based on apartheid terms on jobs like you're a nurse, you're a teacher. Now it's what is the definition mm. of being a black person in South Africa and a black male or a black woman? And what I like is that it, it questions that, and I'm interested for the answer. Well, with people that are willing to engage, it's a conversation we can have and brainstorm the next film and get the funding for it. We're going to watch the second film, Nomfundo. Yes. If it does make you uncomfortable, write down that feeling. Yeah. We're going to sure. chat about it. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to hear more from you guys as well. Thank you. Thank you, Didi. Cool. <laughs> 
Liswane lelikale sisinsa magwalo alivyo ngimuntu Congratulations, well done. I think I remember uh, conversations you had leading up to the making of this film and for you to have been able to do it against all odds really I think is testimony to other future projects. Uh, I was also happy to see Dineo, yes. um, the lead girl there, is my former boss. She used to be the production manager of a, a lifestyle TV program called Test Corner on SABC One, Prime Slot. She was also on 5FM. Yeah. And she gave it up for what she loves the most now. Let's talk about the passion that you have for filming. So I was actually showing as I am in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Dinelle was doing an acting course there. I said, Dinelle, come through and watch as I am. So we watched it together, and at the Pan-African uh, Film Festival, there are a lot of people of African descent and so forth, but mm -hmm. just a mix. And we saw that, Ayman. People want to see more. They mm -hmm. had so many questions. Why is your funeral five days? Why you got to slaughter a cow? <laughs> Why you got to, <laughs> you know? So there's so much that they don't, like to us, that we take yes. for granted, that to them is just so fresh to their eyes. So we said, with you know, uh, <coughs> are we going to wait? Mm -hmm. Uh, for some funding institution to give us the go ahead or are we just going to do this our, ourselves? And you went ahead and did it by yourself. Please explain to those who might not be familiar with what crowdfunding is exactly. <laughs> crowdfunding, guys. Yo, it's groveling. <laughs> it's humbling. <laughs> you, it's very humbling. Um, it's when you ask people to contribute to your film. For example, my uncle here, he contributed... There's a cousin of mine, Dindo, he contributed. Different family members, uh, different people that my ex-bosses, friends, you know, just people that we don't even know. They all came together and contributed some money to the film. And in turn, they came to our premiere and we thank them on our credits. Uh, uh, but what's, what's so ironic when Nampum is that this film, which we had less money for, and then the NFEF came on board later mm -hmm. for us to do post-production, which is the music composition, the color grading, all those things after, after we had shot. Um, so we're also grateful to the NFEF for supporting our Swati films because who else has supported them? Family, Sile. And How important is having family? Is it? I see you've got your family here. I'm not going to yes. put them on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but not, I mean, often... In, 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 we don't have the privilege um, of our families understanding the industries that we work in, especially creative industry. I studied media, and when mm. I said to my mother I wanted to do journalism, from Whitbank, all she could think of is the Whitbank News. And she was worried, because yeah. how do you make a living out of your passion? Mm. We're going to talk to two points. The importance of support mm -hmm. from family, but also educating the same communities that you are representing in your films about a bigger world. Yeah. Yo, the support is very important and I'm grateful. I'm very grateful, guys. Thank you so much. Um, it means the world to me because I know there are so many others that can't explore mm -hmm. and can't be artists even if they want to and, you know, can't have those careers. We are seven up. We are seven up. But one of my grandmother's last words to me was, Sile, uma unga TV was was born I don't know how to uh, translate that, but it was basically like, keep on this path. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, so I, yeah, I, I have been placed in that regard. But where does this need to promote Siswati come from? Surely. He... Okay, so it, it comes from family again, uh, mainly from my grandparents, um, especially uh, they were lovers of language. My grandfather was an author, my grandmother as well. So they instilled that in me. Kuti, you know, Sile, it's important to know English is the language of business. Mm -hmm. But you need to know who you are. Mm. You need to know how to speak your language. So thank you. When I enrolled for my master's degree, 
I said that would be my topic. Advice. The un- uh, I was at uh, Porches Room. Okay. The underrepresentation of minority groups uh, on SAPC One, the mm-hmm. case of Siswat, mm-hmm. that was the topic of the dissertation. So then it was like, so since I'm pointing it out, what am I doing about it? We're chatting to Sibu uh, Siso Vilane and Walter Thornton tomorrow, and he's also one people, uh, one person who often says, if your why is big enough, the how will fall in place. And I guess that was your why. Um, how I, I, I'm glad you mentioned your grandfather and books at the Low Vault Book Festival because when I spoke to you one time, I think I mentioned an old book that I came across. Yes. And I said, I'm reading this book. It's a Siswati book with a series of short stories by a Mr. S.S. Matlalela. And we, it, this is years after we <laughs> met. And she says to me, that's my grandfather. So I was, I'm very quite impressed with that. Um, what are we doing uh, to document books onto film when we adapt them? Because then it does reach a broader um, group. Mm. One of the authors that are attending, in attendance at the Lofeld Book Festival is Dudubusani Dube whose books are about um, eight Zulu brothers, taxi drivers turned businessmen. Mm. I mean, she was sold out from the boot. I know because we sold out of the boots mm. before she got onto, um, got onto the yeah. main bookstores. Yeah. But then people started asking, should it not go on to, to film? Would you consider maybe even taking your grandfather's work on to film? I will. Is this a commitment? (laughs) (laughs) I will. I'm actually working with a a writer now called Mm Lidutu Malinga Tutumanga, who is an award-winning like writer author, and we are working on a short film now. So, So yes, I'm open to that. An award-winning filmmaker. We we are excited about it, and we hope you will bring it home more often. This is the start of many things. And my last question to you is: How do we take this back to the townships? to the rural villages to expose the young kids to people that look like them, that speak like them, so that we continue preserving and promoting um, while developing language. Okay. So with the film like Nom mm-hmm. well, let me just go briefly. It's been to over 15 countries, Egypt, America, mm. uh, you it. name it, you know. Uh, but what was important for me was the a community engagement. Mm-hmm. The screenings that we have like this, they don't come with some kind of um, award. You can't mm-hmm. quantify mm-hmm. that experience. So going into the communities, on Women's Day, we're watching Nomfundo in Cosmo City mm. with the grannies that do boxing in the community, with women that have been abused, with women who can speak to that generational trauma that goes from child to mother to grandmother and so forth, you know. so. Those, those kind of screenings are very important, and that's when we can sit down as people and really talk. And what comes out of those kind of conversations? It's, it differs so much because it brings out different things in people, but you see, sometimes it's that cathartic thing, because for example, with Fundo, it's quite poetic, right, and mm-hmm. experimental, but I, this girl once came to me, and someone that I thought wouldn't maybe connect the dots, and she says, Yes, mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. This so, is the same thing that I yes. went through with my mother. Yes. So you, you just want to heal by telling stories and sharing, getting it out there and holding space for each other in, in places like this. And while we're here, are there any questions, comments, thoughts for Sise? Collaborations? I have a question. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, not funding. <laughs> uh, but um, in terms of your storytelling, why is it that it's so important for you not to use so much wording, but rather imagery? Well, what What are you trying to, as an audience, what are you trying to tell us? Yeah. I'm trying to, I want you to do the hard work. Thank I don't you. want to spoon feed you. I want you to connect the dots of the symbolism and put it together and say, oh, but that and this means that. So I embedded in there on purpose so you can do the hard work. And also it's exercise for me as a as like as a filmmaker because it's that rule, show don't tell. Yeah. We must be able to to you know, for a story to make sense without you having to say a single word. 
and it's it's this medium, the big screen. So it's like a marathon. I'm just training myself. But you do it so well because you show us, okay. you go back and you remind us. So we would have a common theme. Yes. I want to take a second question there and then I'll come to you, Walter. Uh, okay, something that you asked earlier on as I am on what has been the reaction like, from communities okay, what you mentioned was uh, the different film festivals but I, I just feel like that maybe sometimes we uh, as middle class we, we talk to ourselves mm -hmm. but we don't get to hear what the other people's experiences which are not uh, like represented in the product. Yo, I've shown this to guys from, you know, the hood and stuff like that, and they were very disturbed, like, mm. yo, I'm Lungisi. Mm. Hi, man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the people that are like, hey, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's the reaction you want, so that next time when you encounter another Mlungisi, you are not encountering him as the same person, you know. Mm. It's like, in now, in now, but for yes, me. Yes, yes. When I see another guy from the Eastern Cape, I think, what is your story, man? Because mm -hmm. you've never had that platform. Yeah, so we ha we, those are the kind of reactions we get. And then, like, again, a lot of interest, like, for example, Triggers conversation. Yeah, around why, uh, why we conduct our funerals in a certain manner, mm -hmm. for example, things like that. And masculinity in Jay, uh, that's always a big, it's a big conversation, even right now, even though we did this years ago. Yeah, it's still years, years an ago, yeah. Thing. Yeah, and we were, <laughs> that rainbow, yeah, yes, yeah yes. idea people are still struggling with. Yes, she, she says years ago, and I, I had a cameo role there. I yeah, I don't know myself. if you guys saw him. I spotted me, I spotted me. <laughs> I almost wanted to stand up and say, <laughs> So I'm coming to Walter. Yeah, uh, mine was just an observation where you said you used, you said show, not tell. Mm -hmm. And I think there were many examples I saw that sort of bled through. And so the, the one in As I Am was uh, that almost that moment when the woman's peeling the potato. Yeah. And the cup breaks and she looks. But you can see in that silence, all the eyes are watching. Mm -hmm. The tension as to what's going on. So that came through very clearly. Yeah. And in Nomfundo, when she comes home, and her partner, I think it's fine, he just keeps polishing his shoes. Mm -hmm. That sort of the shoes are more important than Detail. where the relationship was at. <laughs> and so it just came through so powerfully, but there were many images like that. So I just wanted to share that back. Thank you. There's a question here. Z and my one school uh, made from film school. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Z has also supported us. Z, I'd like to thank you as well. Z supported us um, as I am. We mm. want Best to Swati uh, yes. film. Remember that. Z has supported us with the Pumalanga film marathon and we really appreciate that, Z. Thank you, Z. <laughs> First, I have a, a comment and uh, a question. Okay, comment obviously is um, we're very proud of you. Um, I'm not here representing my, my workplace, but I, I have been quite active in the film provincially, film uh, industry, and uh, it is a struggling industry. We are fairly very young and we are really struggling to, to grow. It's a process anyway, and it's still gonna be a long process, but Sitle, we are very proud of you. Mm. I'm, I'm very proud of you. Being a female, being a local, mm. exploring those international uh, platforms. Girl, please keep it up. And uh, I hope many more people see you and, and follow your steps um, locally and females, especially. Um, I, I wanted to ask about um, As I Am. Talking about symbolism and, and the silent messages that you're sending across, I noticed you, um, the car registration that mm. you used. Mm -hmm. Was that on purpose that you used yes. something from the Transvaal? The Transvaal um, guys. Yeah. Because <laughs> Anita and us originally were like, we want to shoot in nail sprays. Yeah. And then they gave us stories about your equipment and removing the unit and it's going to cost so much. Mm. So we said, Ish, guys, can you at least find a place that looks like Mpumala? Nothing compares to Mpumala. We just yes. have to come and shoot here. And then they took us to Mahalisburg and then those number plates have to do with that. Can I just, oh, uh, I, 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 sorry, I, can I just I, come up and say this, now, as a director? <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you. <laughs> um, she, she's like what they say about the guy from Breaking Bad. Yeah. Okay, 
She pays attention to detail. Everything. It, I mean, you don't understand, like, there were scenes that were cut out mm -hmm. that were not even in the film where I had to be naked and you could have seen my bum. Yeah, but, uh, you guys didn't. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but remember that scene. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so right, I'm oh, going to yeah. interrupt you here and we're going to take this conversation out this side when we, we're really chilly. But she's such a, an attention to detail when you picked it up. Everything is mm. not perchance. Mm. And, yeah. and, and when you listen to her, you, you grasp what she's about. The yeah. meetings we had prior to even me coming across to do this, it was her and the detail. That, and, and it's scary because it's a short film. How do you develop a story when it's... Limited time. Exactly. Like much my time. I'm going to go to Takani <laughs> now, and then I'm going to take Jen, and uh, we wrap Wait, it up. Yeah. Takani? Sorry, was the lady finished? Sorry, Z, were you yes, finished? Yes, sorry. Yeah, you well, I, was, I, was, I was about to take it to my own interpretation, actually, uh -huh. which, which led to my question. And I, see, I saw the Transvaal um, license plate, and then I just wondered if it was on purpose that you did, you shot it in the time frame of, of back then, and then it would come to now. Like, why... If, if, it, if it wasn't purpose that it was done that way, which you've explained that it wasn't, uh, then I would ask, why would you choose to, to make it something that is of, of the olden days? Do you think it's not what is happening now that you would use something that is current? Mm. You understand? Mm. Okay, so for me, I saw it like, like an old piece of furniture that you can pretty much have, like an antique. So not really set in any time. Like even if you look at the costume and stuff like that, I wanted to give it a timeless feel. I suppose that number plate does indicate some type of, you know, time frame. But yes. no, I wanted it to be just like an old piece of furniture. I, 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 because I knew at the time of the number plate that it was supposed to bring the location to mind. But my interpretation of the antique was that something that old is still so relevant because I'm watching it now. Yeah. I'm going to go to Takani. I just wanted to find out, firstly, Sikle, I'm a big fan. Um, and I tell you this all the time when I speak to you on the phone, like I have a fan moment. For you. Fan, we're going to have time for fans right now. <laughs> My question is, the names of the films are so simple. And um, what did you want us to learn from Nom Fundo? Because obviously we all have our own different interpretations. But like the names are so simple. And when you look at it and you watch the films, it's so different. It what, sticks with you. What, what was, is that, oh, is that your answer? No, 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 that, I'm like the name, you can, none of us will forget as I am and Nomfundo when we leave out of here. Yeah. yeah. These are normal names. I mean, Nomfundo is, so many people are called Nomfundo. And as I am is something that we probably say so often. How did those names come to you and putting this together? They, they usually come to me at the end of the process. So I don't try to force a name on, on the movie or the mm -hmm. thing until the very end. And then it just comes organically. Yeah. And last question, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Touching and moving, it's just beyond. Okay. Yeah. So well done. And, and thank you for sort of taking on this work. Mm. So, and doing it so beautifully. Thank it's such heart. So, um, and I wanted to ask you, when are you using this, well, are you combining this movie, working with organizations at all, or when you show the film, are you running deeper work around it? So workshops and using it as a, a tool to yes. then to actually then unpack, so run an all day workshop based on the film or anything like that? Those opportunities have been a bit missed with as, as I am, which because it makes people so uncomfortable, I think we should actually revisit it. With Nomfundo, we've done a bit of that. I'd just like to speak briefly about what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. So today I'm with my crew, and we're shooting a documentary called Lobola, A Bright's True Price. So thank God we are finally shooting in Nelspreit. Uh Finally, even though both films were not in yeah. our spread, but here we are. So you yes. fight, you fight, and then so here we mm. are. Um, but with that, um, with a, with something like Lobola Price to Price, yes, we will have much more community mm. engagement. And yeah, again, we as filmmakers need support to have those spaces. I, and think, I just feel that you know, 
meeting, meetings are so powerful mm -hmm. that if we bring about such transformation for people yeah. who can just sit and maybe be the catalyst for them to unpack mm -hmm. trauma and hurt and in a facilitated process. Yeah. And of course, Thank Jane you. would have the venue for that. Um, she owns an artist retreat. Okay. <laughs> around home since you are home. Uh, okay, Jeb. And leaving there. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for supporting the Lofal Book Festival so much. It's not often that you are celebrated at home. Yes. So a round of applause to everybody you. that's here. Thank you. Yeah. Tomorrow is the last day of events, so try and catch as many as you can. Visit the website, visit the Facebook page to make sure that you didn't miss anything. And, uh, yeah, myself, Mbumi. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey. uh, this is your, don't